Hello and welcome on Thomas Geiger car, today with the Pininfarina Battista. After 90 years of creating the most beautiful sports cars and luxury cars on the market for other companies, Pininfarina has decided to build its own car and it's going to be a Hyper GT, the most powerful car ever built in Italy and one of the most powerful cars on the road of all time, powered by four electric engines of 1,900 horsepower. It will still take a few months until this car hits the market, but here in Nardo on the secret test track in the south of Italy, we're here to witness the first experience with that hypercar. If you want to know what to expect from the car that will let the Bugatti look like a lame duck, join me on my first passenger ride here on Thomas Geiger car. Usually you might expect an 8, 12 or in case of the Bugatti a 16 cylinder in the back of the car. No, there is just cables, wires, electronics, because the Battista is powered by four electric motors with a total of 1900 horsepower, 2300 newton meters of torque. And also the battery is quite impressive. 120 kilowatt hours, 7000 lithium ion cells, 650 kilos in the floor of the car, giving you a range of 500 kilometers in the usual cycle. And even if you go full throttle, you got way more than 100 kilometers to go. So lots of fun and we're going to experience that right now. I guess there is no more disappointing place in the car world as the passenger seat in the Pininfarina Battista. Why? Because there is no more tempting place than the driver's seat controlling 1,900 horsepower. At least I have a decent driver, Formula One race driver Nick Heidfeld is a development driver for Pini Farina and is telling us how this car feels and how is the difference to the conventional hypercars. So Nick, can you tell us a bit about the experience driving this machine? Yeah, the experience is just unique, I would say. I've driven many other quick cars before, but as you say, this being an electric hypercar, the torque we have available with 2,300 Newton meter is just something beyond understanding until you experience it for the very first time. But while this is to be expected, what was most special to me in the beginning was how well it behaves on a racetrack as here. It's a Hyper GT, so it's not a purposely built track weapon, but it feels so much at home here. And the impressive thing is that this is the case even though it's not the lightest car in the world. I mean, it always sounds strange if you clap, tap yourself on the shoulder, but for the stage we are at now, I think we are right on target because there's still a lot more to come. We have more power to come because we're not on 1900 horsepower yet. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot more torque vectoring to come and fine tuning. But already the experience is, is unique. Do you have to be a race driver to be able to drive that car? Is it, if you say it's a weapon, is it dangerous to drive it without the proper experience? Or is it a car you can sit in and drive from the start? No, you can drive it easily. I'm sure anybody in the world can drive this car easily. And I said, it is not a, a track weapon. It is not uh, built as a track weapon. Yeah. You have to imagine the laps we just did were without traction control. Yeah, okay. Still, without traction control, the acceleration was, for me, amazing. Yeah. And we had no wheel spin whatsoever. So, if you add all the systems on top of that, it will become even more, more easy. Okay. What I would say is difficult, and people have to learn, is the rate of acceleration that you have, especially on higher speeds. Yeah. So, normally, for me personally, when I learn a circuit, and you look for the braking points, and then, at the beginning, I'll say, you break a second later to, to see where you are. On a conventional car, let's say you look at the speedometer, yeah. you go 150, 155, 160, okay, and then you break and maybe you're a bit too late. On this car, at least for me feeling wise, you do the same, 150, 160, 170. So it's not only that you break a little bit uh, later, timing wise, but the speed is so much quicker. Yeah. So this is where we have to be a bit careful when you're not okay. used to this. The only problem is, Everybody might be able to drive the car. There's just one little obstacle, the price. Two million euros plus taxes. So most probably not really everybody is able to drive that vehicle. But thanks for the ride, it was very impressive. So we've changed from the prototype into the production car. That is not a running production car, but at least it gives us a glimpse of how the interior will look like. And that is pretty special because the Battista is somewhere in between the track tool. It is really good on the track, but it is a hypercar GT. So a cruiser for the grand journey. So it's also a very luxurious vehicle. 
not as fancy and jewelry as we know it from the Bugatti, but in a very stylish, very elegant, and nevertheless very luxurious way. Lots of beautiful materials and a very driver-focused cluster with two big screens, one small screen and only a few buttons. Plus we have two dials, one for the gear shifter, one for the drive modes and that's basically it. And if you think that is not enough, you should always keep in mind that you're handling 1,900 horsepower, and there should not be too many things distracting you from driving. Thanks for joining me on that first passenger ride with the Pininfarina Battista, an experience I never had before. If a conventional sports car is like a fighter jet and a Bugatti is like a rocket, this is a spaceship, not only faster and more brutal, also totally silent, a very new experience. But the good news is the segment of sports cars might change, the combustion engines might soon be gone, but the fun will stay. Because as long as there will be boys, there will be toys. And as long as these boys are rich, the toys will be fast and furious. Thank you, bye bye, and see you again soon here at Thomas Geiger Car.